Welcome back to Views and Vibes. We are talking about interracial relationships. And before we went to break, we were beginning to talk about the experiences that biracial children have. And when people are considering um, forming a, a union um, with someone outside of their ethnicity, how much do they take in con into consideration the experiences of their children? Or the, the potential experiences of the, of the children? Well, in the, in the couples that I've seen, um, the, the parents themselves don't seem to really have a problem with, mm -hmm. with their identity. And I think the parents that are more comfortable with their identity, because they've already worked those issues out to be together. Right. So really the resistance is coming from, from outside the, the family mm -hmm. and people, other people's perceptions of what those children might have to go through. Mm -hmm. But the parents themselves seem to be real comfortable and secure with it. And if your parents are, are comfortable and secure with it, they tend to pass that security on to their kids. Mm -hmm. And then the kids, you know, are growing up in these uh, multicultural uh, uh, neighborhoods now with with lots of different friends and so they're not, they're having even less of an issue of of that whole identity piece and um, many many of the families now are describing it as the, as being the best of both worlds so they're able to borrow mm -hmm. from different you know cultural influences and raise their kids that way and the kids love it I, I mean I know for me growing up in Albany New York upstate um, I grew up with a lot of biracial children and it seemed like they got a lot of attention, a lot of negative attention because of, you know, their skin color and, you know, being in an urban area. Um, and so they would often be the target of violence. You know, people saying, oh, she thinks she's cute because she's light skin. And, you know, be, receiving that kind of negativity, um, are we seeing less of that now? Are we seeing more of that? Are we still seeing, are we still seeing those kind of attitudes with children growing up in this millennium? I, I truly believe it's, I mean, what are we talking about, 30 years ago? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> thank, thank you, Christy. Yes, thirty years ago, Christy. Thank you. Yeah, around good. there. That was good. That was good. I prefer dramatic. to say like twenty-five, maybe twenty, but yeah, sure. Thirty years ago, all of us, right? For all of us. <laughs> Which is, I mean, really, when you look at the history of um, interracial relationships and ma mm -hmm. interracial marriages, you know, the legality of it um, is only 60 years old, you mm -hmm. know, for the most part. Uh, well, even less than that, 40, 40, yeah, you know, 40, 42, 40 years, 43, you know. Yeah. Um, and so even growing up 30 years ago, it was still, you know, it's happening, yeah. um, but it was still a brand new phenomenon, you know. So today, though, when it's happening, we know it's, you know, further away from that history, and we are having more of those unions. But I think it must matter where you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, you know, as Dr. Sal pointed out, when you are in an area like D.C. or when you're in a New York and you're in a place where there are a lot of mixes of all different kinds, and mm -hmm. it's yawn, you know, and no one cares all right. that much. But I do think that you're right. When you are in constructs that are very homogenous, whether mm -hmm. they're all black or all white or all Asian or all Latin, and you bring in someone who's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, who doesn't clearly fit into a category, then they can become a target because they're so visible and they're so noticeable. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that that will continue to change and break down, like Christine was saying, and I think that it will. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that I want to say is, as you know, as a parent of a biracial child, mm -hmm. I really want same race parents or same race couples when they get married to be asked the same questions that we are asked. Mm -hmm. What about the children? Well, what about your children? <laughs> because let's face it, the divorce rate in America for all couples is 50 percent right. and that has a huge impact on children. In, in some communities, you know, we're not marrying at all. Mm -hmm. That has a huge impact on children. And so my, real, my question is, we put all this attention on what about these biracial children? What about all of our children? What about all children? And what and about even, even being a parent? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Good parents, good child, not so ready parents, problems. And, and even I think in your book, I think I did see a, um, a statistic where you said that um, interracial relationships actually last longer uh, than same race relationships in terms of the divorce rate. Well, some of them do some, and some right. of them don't. Overall, I think, and maybe Dr. Sal has more data on this, but I think overall, interracial relationships tend to have a slightly higher divorce rate than oh, really? same okay. race ones, but there's been a new study that now has broken out the different combinations, okay. and there are some combinations that actually are better than others. Really? Yeah. Which uh, ones? We, we, like, yeah, <laughs> come, come on. Well, I, no, I wouldn't be the person <laughs> to ask on that one. I, <laughs> you know, share, well, they seem to share. last longer. Seem <laughs> to last longer. What would they be? Couples like mine, actually. Black women and white <laughs> men really? tend to last longer than any other interracial peri, and they actually outperform white same race couples, really? which is 
which is pretty damn good. Now, so well, this is good. I'm going to definitely add this to my pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you guys the link. I'll put it up on my website okay. so any of your viewers who are curious about it can mm -hmm. find it. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, th that was one of the first studies that just came out a few weeks ago, I think, that they actually broke why? it down. They listen to reasons why? That? No, they didn't examine okay. reasons. I mean, I, I, some theories might be that, you know, as Dr. Sal was talking about, you work out so much stuff. Mm -hmm when you get into one of these unions. Yeah. You have to work out all kinds of stuff. And for, because there are so few by comparison of you know, black woman, white male compared to white male and white women, uh, but black woman, whoop. Black male, white black, women. Thank you, black I got you back, go on. Um, there, there has been a little bit more historical stigma. You're likely to get reactions on the street and all mm -hmm. of that kind of stuff. So it becomes sort of like you and me, babe, against everybody right, right. else. And if, right. you look, if you look at our history where white males basically have written the script for you know, our country and then you have black females, which is a double minority, right. I mean, those two coming together you know, are really gonna, gonna you know, feel the, the, the heat, so to speak, from societal you know, you know, feedback. Mm -hmm. And so I think by the time they get together and make that choice, they've really worked out a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're very secure with each other and you know kind of like Karen saying you know just ready to take on the world. So. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of curious what were some of the combinations that worked the least? Well um, I'll, <laughs> I'll put the link up on my website but um, the, 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 the weakest among the weakest I think was white women and Asian really? male. A culture clash there tend to be very strong. Mm -hmm. um, white women with black men also okay. was one of the lower um, less successful wow. over time unions. Mm -hmm. Again, culture clash playing in there. Mm -hmm. There was a piece, and I, again, I'll link that too, um, about, um, it was called, this is not my phrase, but this is what it's called, it's called the white woman's burden. Wow. And, and saying that, you know, in trying to marry interracially, that seems to be the group that has the worst track record with success mm -hmm. and analyzing why that might be. I mean, see, I want to continue this conversation. We have to do a part two. No, we have to go to the show. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do a part two on this. Um, I would love to, you know, thank my guests for being here today. Chrissy Nightingale, Sal Corbin, and Karen Folon for joining me in the studio. Um, if you'd like to learn more about my guests today, please look them up on my website, viewsandvibes.com. Until next time, I'm Tyreek Omari-Walton, and this has been Views and Vibes. Take care. <laughs>